Hello everyone, David here, back again to review Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. since it has returned after a three week hiatus. This time I have no idea why it was gone for three weeks. I mean, last time we had the Winter Olympics, this time, I don't know. But, so far, I don't know what it is, but S.H.I.E.L.D. tries to make up for its long br three week breaks in the form of delivering a great episode. And this week it is no exception with episode 16 of season 1 entitled end of the beginning you know it's very dramatic and i'm like why is it so dramatic now i know why now if you have not seen this episode of agents of shield then please do not watch this video because i will be talking about spoilers so if you have not seen the episode go watch it come back and then watch this video first off agent gareth and agent triplet have returned and as so as soon as i saw him i'm like all right a definite plus for this episode points towards this episode for get, getting a good score because I love Bill Paxton as Agent Gareth and sure enough he's great in this episode he's got great dialogue he's just a really cool charismatic character to see on screen and ha have him interact with everybody else on the SHIELD team is awesome a really welcome addition and I'm hoping to see him in many more episodes which we might get if he comes into some form of strong play in this whole plot that's going on after this episode because man things got crazy with this episode this was the one this was the one where I was hoping I was hoping for the producers and the writers to take shield in this direction where they just need to do something that's very effective something impactful something that just delivers a punch and this, this episode did that in spades one of the surprising aspects of this episode was the fact that it wasn't a case of the week sort of deal uh, once again like last episode with lady sif arriving on earth going after lorelei it was actually consistent with what's been going on in the agents of shield universe with coulson trying to track down the clairvoyant and see what he or maybe even she is all about and how, you know what's going on with with him in terms of his recovery from his supposed death as well as Skye's now uh, current recovery uh, from her near death experience and their sort of connection with in terms of that history and I, that surprised me quite an awful lot like wow they're not even going to waste any time they're actually going to go ahead and start going with that plot and take it in a brand new direction and at the beginning of the episode you have Coulson and Gareth t taking initiative with Agent Han and almost everybody else that we've seen in S.H.I.E.L.D. so far in the concept of this series to finally take the fight to the clairvoyant to figure out it, uh, his or her identity and to just thwart his, his or her entire plan uh, along with Deathlock who is obviously Michael Peterson who is also in this episode but for a brief a brief amount of time which is one of the things that I sort of kind of didn't like about this episode is that I kind of wish we we seen some more Deathlock because he, he was pretty cool and J. August Richards is doing a good job with the role but I just wish that he was utilized just a little more but I'm okay with what we got of him but they decide to go after him and hopefully track him down so that they can finally track down the clairvoyant and after some time and having sky being inducted into shield as an agent and concocting this whole plan of pairing them off that way nobody knows all of the information of how this plan is going to go about so that the clairvoyant doesn't track them i thought that was all pretty smart and very intriguing to see until finally we find the clairvoyant who apparently is this catatonic man named Nash, something Nash, I can't remember, but it's revealed that he is the clairvoyant, which is this catatonic man who speaks through a computer similar to Stephen Hawking, and boy, did I find that kind of creepy. I, this is a really weird comparison, but it reminded me an awful lot of the Saw movies with Jigsaw not really being the, the doll, but much more this cancer patient who speaks with that very creepy voice and they couldn't have found a better voice for that trans you know that uh, computerized translator than to have this really creepy voice which is a little convenient I will admit at the beginning the voice was kind of consistent with its very mechanical tone like Stephen Hawking uses in his voice box but after a while that voice started to turn very malevolent and eerie and creepy and I'm like okay it's effective for the scene but a voice, vo a voice box doesn't work that way. <laughs> but I did find the scene effective. The way it was all 
this shot was something out of seven, only for toned down to Agents of Shield standards. You know, it's nothing that David Fincher would would do. But I did feel like it was very appropriate for the show in terms of its creepiness and eerie nature, and it was really good. And I was like, wow, I'm hoping that this guy plays with these people's minds even more. But then, boom, Ward shoots and kills what is seemingly the clairvoyant and my jaw just dropped i that was the moment that i was hoping that shield would bring to the forefront at some point in this show this moment that just made you go what the hell just happened and this was it ward out of nowhere ward the one the, you know, the boy scout the one who would do things by the book just comes out of nowhere and shoots the guy and kills him Everybody, I had the same reaction that everybody else did. Not only in that room, but also the people who were watching through those little, little orbs that that Fitz sent out to get signals uh, and and try to scope out the place back in uh, the hub. And we was just looking at the screen like, what the hell just happened? It was crazy, and it was something that Shield really needed. But it doesn't stop there. Okay, he's taken in for questioning. Uh, questioning, obviously he. He went against orders, so obviously he's going to have to face a review board and face some sort of sentence or whatnot. So he's being held captive aboard the the the, the ship, the, the plane. And it is here where some discoveries are made. Sky and Coulson figure out that the clairvoyant doesn't really have any powers after looking through the files and to try to kind of... I don't know what the proper term is. To kind of fish out the clairvoyant, knowing that you gotta think like he or she thinks and so doing that sky figured out sky along with colson figure out that the clairvoyant doesn't really have any powers but they have clearance to this information and if they have clearance they have to be a shield agent that's the only way that this could this could be possible and intertwining with that fitz figures out may's encrypted line that we saw in that previous episode where May picked up the phone and said, Coulson knows. That gets brought out here in this episode. And, and me as a viewer, I'm putting two and two together. And I'm like, oh my God. It's either May or Ward, who is obviously then fiercely interrogated by Coulson saying, did you kill this guy on purpose? Did you, were you ordered by somebody to kill this guy? It was just very intense. This is something that S.H.I.E.L.D. just needed, and we finally got it, and I'm just so happy. Then May brings out that pistol, and I'm like, oh my god, it's really happening. It's really happening, and, and you know, they're all scrambling a, a, along the jet. They have this nice little standoff where May, you can clearly tell that something's up by the look on her face. Like, May being all stilted and, you know, stone cold, just, you know, emotionless, that's gone, alright? You can clearly tell on her face that... She's hiding something, and she's probably afraid of something. At, at I'm not gonna lie, I am. I'm not gonna lie. At any moment, I was expecting that eye to go, and May dying, because I and I was fearing it. Don't get me wrong, because I really do like May. Uh, there's some part. There there were some episodes in the season where I didn't really like her so much because I did think that she was just very emotionless and not properly developed. She was just that dark stone faced character that we that had in the background but i think she's come somewhat of a way since then so i've grown to like her and i was genuinely fearing that she was going to die in that scene should the clairvoyant had figured out that they had figured out and that the clairvoyant was being able to see all this through may but then the ship gets turned around and i was expecting ward to be at the cockpit of the uh, of the plane when it turned around and headed towards a different direction but then we cut to agent han giving direct orders to shoot the to shoot everybody else on the plane as soon as it boards except for Coulson. He's hers. So I think it's safe to say that Agent Hand may very well be the clairvoyant. Now, you could argue that maybe she's just taking some sort of protocol, but Coulson did say that it's a shield agent who the clairvoyant is. And Hand is specifically asking for Coulson to be alive. Everybody else dead. Don't care. I just want Coulson probably to find out what brought him back from the dead and I, how is she going to be how is she going to use this we don't know maybe somebody in the marvel universe is brought back from the dead after 70 years 
Yeah, let that sink in for a second. I never thought that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. would make me think this much in terms of the grand picture of what is known to be the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, it's crazy. Now, if I were to come up with any sort of nitpicks, because I genuinely love this episode, I will dare say this is my favorite episode of the season so far. I mean, more so than the other episodes that I said were my favorite. Like, one after another, I was like, oh no, this is my favorite episode. Oh no, this is my favorite episode. Now, I can honestly say, this is my favorite episode. And I think it's going to take a lot to really dethrone this one to be my favorite of the season so far but if i were to uh, to come up with any sort of nitpicks whatsoever would be that the effects on deathlock were in some instances very tv quality especially when he jumps from the top of that building all the way to the ground floor it, it was kind of corny looking and there's this thing that happens when everybody gets split off or paired off i should say into finding out the possible leads to who the clairvoyant might be. There was that part where Gareth and Coulson are in the car exchanging some really clever dialogue. I was laughing a lot. But there's a point where they get kind of cornered in an, in an alleyway or something. And then that never gets resolved. Like, nobody, we never find out what happened with that. We only, we only know what happened with... The, the the Nash character in the housing the the retire the you know the, the the home the nursing home when Deathlock appeared and t took out Agent Blake and conveniently didn't take out Melinda May that was the only one that actually did get wrapped up all the others I mean yeah Ward and and Trip they did get kind of detracted before they got any they went any further in their investigation but the one with Coulson and, and Gareth I'm like okay what happened there it looked like some people were about to sabotage him from behind that's not inappropriate and it never got resolved I really wish I could have seen more of that and other than that I guess not much not much of Gareth and Trip all right I would have loved to have seen Bill Paxton as Gareth even more and I'm hoping to see to see him in future episodes I mean we already had him appear a second time let's go for a third and a fourth because I love his character and they should definitely keep him as a regular for now I will say that this is so far my favorite episode and for that I think it's only deserving for episode 16 of season one of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. entitled the end of the beginning appropriately titled a nine out of ten it's definitely my favorite episode so far, and it's going to take a lot to top this one off. <laughs> and furthermore, I really want to see how all of this plays in the Marvel Cinematic Universe now that we have Captain America the Winter Soldier coming up. There, I really hope that they tie it in in a way where it doesn't give away the movie for people who have not seen the movie just yet but are watching the television show, and at, vice versa. People who did watch the movie but haven't seen the television show will not be out of the loop when they do go see the movie saying, oh, that's where Nick Fury was, or I don't know, because Captain America is definitely going to have some sort of requirement to be tied in with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., considering that S.H.I.E.L.D. is a huge part in both of these things, in the, the show as well as the movie. Thor the Dark, the Dark World took place in London and in Asgard, so it didn't really... I find it kind of ironic that out of all the Marvel movies... Thor The Dark World has had the most uh, references in the show, but having the least ties with the show, considering that it doesn't really have that much to do when it comes to these worlds connecting with one another, whereas Captain America, it's all about S.H.I.E.L.D. So, and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is obviously all about S.H.I.E.L.D., so I really hope they do a really good job at tying these two together when I do go see the movie and when the next episode comes out. So let me know what you guys thought of this episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because, woo, it was a doozy. And I'll see you guys next week for sure to review the next episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Later.